In today's exercise, we will examine the service and overhaul procedures for our 4 inch Badger, the BAP6. Engineered to clean 4 to 6 inch pipes, both straight and with elbows, this Badger model features 5 jetting ports and is rated up to 15,000 psi with a flow capacity of up to 30 gallons per minute. The BA's compact design allows it to travel around long sweeping elbows and the rear facing jets offer plenty of pulling power. The front boring jet, offset at 15 degrees, can also be plugged, converting the jetting pattern to a polisher. The P6 model has a 3 8 inch inlet connection, either NPT or BSPP. The P6 model features two different rotation speed options, fast and slow, based on the viscous fluid in the body. For this demonstration, we will use slow viscous steering reassembly. For these procedures, you will need the following tools. A large adjustable wrench, pick, crescent wrench or 13 16 inch open end wrench, slot screwdriver, BA-105 spacer tool, white grease, blue goop anti-seize, and snap ring pliers. A press and a vise will also come in handy. Before we get started, spend a moment and familiarize yourself with the main components of this badger. Here we have the tool fully assembled with a port screw, jetting ports, body, heat tempered wear ring, nut with second port screw, and 3 8 inch inlet port. Begin disassembly by locating the wrench flats on the body and securing the tool in a vise with the inlet end facing up. Use a slot screwdriver to remove the port screw from the nut. With a large adjustable wrench, loosen the nut and unscrew it. Note the shaft seal inside the nut. You'll remove that in a few minutes. Slide the heat tempered wear ring off the body. This ring protects the tool when in operation. Note the lip on one side of the ring. In this assembly, that lip will face the front or head end of the tool. Set it aside for now. Next, lift the shaft assembly out of the body. There are no threads on this assembly, so it should lift out easily. Be aware, viscous fluid usually spills out at this time. When removed, note the bearing ring and disc stack up on the shaft. There are also two parts inside the shaft, a brass seat and a high pressure seal. Use a pick to remove them and replace them with new parts from your service or seal kit. Set the shaft assembly aside. We'll finish disassembling that in a moment. The body should still be in the vise. Remove the O-ring from the base of the threads with a pick and gently pry out the shaft seal with a slot screwdriver. This is also a good time to remove the port screw from the body. Set it aside for cleaning. Note there are four factory installed pins in this Badger model two on the interior wall of the body and two against the shaft. These pins are for the disc assembly and normally don't require any maintenance. We strongly recommend leaving them installed as is. Now repeat the procedure with the nut. There is not an o-ring to remove, however the shaft seal needs to be pried out with a slot screwdriver as shown. Turn your attention now to the shaft assembly. Flip it so the disc side faces up. Using snap ring pliers, remove the retaining ring from the shaft. With the retaining ring off, you can remove the discs. Pay attention as you remove these discs. It will help during reassembly. There are two different kinds of discs, brass and stainless. The stainless discs have a smaller inner diameter and two notches to fit around pins in the shaft as shown here. The brass discs have a wider inner diameter to accommodate an o-ring around the shaft and notches on the outside for corresponding pins on the body wall. Additional drill holes in each disc are to allow viscous fluid to move through the tool. As you remove each disc, note the difference in the discs and o-rings in the center. We'll go over this again in detail during reassembly. With the discs removed, the last step is to press the bearing ring off the shaft. We use a press for this step. With the bearing ring removed, your disassembly is now complete. Wash all appropriate parts in solvent and blow dry. 
Note the replacement parts in your service kit and be certain to use all the new parts to make the most of your downtime. Begin reassembly at the press, where you will mount the bearing ring on the shaft and press the shaft seals into the body and the nut. Start by pressing on the bearing ring. This bearing has no wider inner race and can be mounted on the shaft either way. Note the shoulder on the shaft and make certain the bearing is firmly up against it. Now replace the o-ring on the base of the body threads and prepare to mount the shaft seal inside. You'll need your BA-105 spacer tool that comes with your service kit and some lubricant. We recommend P80 Grip It when installing all shaft seals. Lubricate the shaft seal and place it on the spacer with the lip side down. Lubricate again and then carefully press the seal into the body, rotating the body slowly for a good fit. When properly installed, it should look like this. Now flip the spacer and prepare the shaft seal for the nut in the same manner. Brush on P80 Grip It and note the lip side of this seal faces down as well. Press the seal gently into the nut, again rotating slowly for a good fit. The seal should look like this. It's time to replace the disc assembly on the shaft. Locate your clean brass and stainless discs, along with the three new O-rings from your service kit and the new snap ring. Begin by placing a stainless disc on the bottom. Note how the notches on each stainless disc match the pins on the shaft. Next, place an O-ring over the shaft on top of the first stainless disc. Then, place the first brass disc on the shaft so it fits around the O-ring as shown. Repeat the procedure, alternating the discs until six discs are on together. This should leave you with the final stainless steel disc on top as shown. Before replacing the retaining ring, take a moment to make sure that all the drill holes in the disc stack up are lined up. As mentioned before, these holes allow viscous fluid to move freely throughout the tool so lining them up properly will aid in performance. Note also how the stack up compresses when the technician presses down on it. This is normal. Finally, replace the retaining ring on the shaft, locking the disc assembly into place. Next, the high pressure seal goes in with either side facing up. Press the seal down far enough to leave a 1 16th inch recess at the top. Place the brass seat in that recess with the flat side down, chamfer side up. Next, slide the shaft assembly into the body. Two things of importance here. One, note the pins on the body wall. The pins correspond with the notches on the brass discs as shown here. It's easy to know where the pins are because they match the wrench flats on the outside of the body. The second important thing is to generously grease the shaft seal in the body. Join the two components together, matching the pins and the notches. When inserted properly, you should be able to rotate the shaft back and forth as shown. Now fill the body with viscous fluid. We suggest using the nut as a stand and then rest the body on top with the shaft end facing up. In this exercise, we are using slow or thicker viscous fluid to fill the body. There are several things to note here. You want to make sure all the bubbles are up and out before moving on. Here are a couple of tricks. First, pour in a little fluid. Let it settle and then spin the shaft with a wrench. This will help get the bubbles up and out. Second, if you pour the fluid into the same side each time as the technician is doing here, then the air bubbles come out the other side more easily. This is a slow process, so don't rush it. Spin the shaft frequently until all the bubbles are out. Brush blue goop on the threads of the body and place it back in the vise using the wrench flats to secure. Be careful when you move the tool not to grab it by the shaft. It could lift right out. Instead, lift the tool from under the body or you'll have a mess on your hands. Pour a little more viscous fluid over the top of the bearing and grease the shaft seal on the inside of the nut. Slide the wear ring onto the nut with the lip as shown and then screw the nut onto the body. Tighten with an adjustable wrench. As the nut tightens, you will see viscous fluid begin to ooze from the port. This is to be expected. 
Continue tightening, clean off the excess, and replace the port screw. Your reassembly is now complete. Before we wrap things up, let's look at the Badger support available from Stone Age. This is the BA602 seal kit. It contains a high pressure seal and brass seat. In the BA604 disc kit, you'll find written instructions, four stainless steel discs, a retaining ring, three brass discs, and three O rings. These are the items in the BA612 toolkit. You'll find a BA105 spacer tool used for installing the shaft seals and snap ring pliers. The BA600 service kit has written instructions, fast or slow viscous fluid, a syringe applicator, high pressure seal and brass seat, and a plug for the front jet of the tool creating a polisher jetting pattern. The BA610 overhaul kit naturally has more items. It has written instructions, fast or slow viscous fluid, a large o-ring, port screws, shaft seals, high pressure seal, brass seat, retaining ring, disc o-rings, and a bearing ring. That's it. If you have any questions or concerns, our staff of technical specialists are always on hand for support. Thanks again, and keep on blasting.